All right, now let's take a look at TCP headers, an in-depth look into TCP headers. So really a lot of the understanding of how TCP works and how this communication works can be taken from the TCP header. By understanding the TCP header, it'll start forming the full picture of how this TCP uh, segment, it communicates and how it works. So let's take a look at the TCP header. As we see here, uh, this is the TCP header and this row right here is representative of the bit. So for each one of these squares right here, this is a bit. So bit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, for easy to references, I've got it wrapped up into what the byte looks like. So from here to here is one byte. So I've got one, two, three, four bytes across the top that are represented or 32 bits. And because I can't put this all sequentially out into this big long line, I actually broke them into it uh, rather than going horizontal vertical. So <clears throat> this is the zero through three bytes. This is four through seven, eight through 11, uh, 12 through 15, 16 through 19. So total 20 bytes because we start out with the zero byte the, um, and we count up to 19. So we got total of 20 bytes. Although there are some options that we can add down here. So let's take a look at each one of these fields that are found within this and take a look at what, what components are in each one of these fields, what they do. Now remember we have IP addresses which are found in the layer three side of this, the packet, and we've got the port that it's associating with or the service that it's associated with. And so this all together is what we call a socket. We find this first part in the layer three packet. We find the second part in the layer four segment. And then also we've got both the source or excuse me, the destination, but we also have the source. And that source has a layer three address that's in there, but then it also has that layer four port and that can come, can be randomly chosen. So I'm gonna choose a random port here uh, that we're going to be sending across. And that's gonna be used to establish that connection back and forth. So it knows what information it delivered to which browser, which, uh, which, um, specific uh, tab that you happen to have open on that port. And this is what is the ephemeral port. So we have two parts to this and we're gonna see that within the header, we're gonna see how the ports in this layer four show up as a source port and a destination port. Okay, so the first things that we run across within this layer four is the source port and destination port. And if we took a look at that, that is 16 bits. And so with that, there is 65,536 possible combinations that we have when we are dealing with 16 bits. And so that would be the range actually would be anywhere from zero to 65,535. That is why our port numbers are anywhere from zero to 65,535 or 65,536 different possibilities. So that's where we get that ranges that we were looking at earlier um, that, that form our, both our source and our destination port. So that is the source and destination port. Okay, so let's talk about sequencing and how the sequencing happens as it's sending from one location to the next. And this first uh, packet that's being sent over or this first segment that's being sent over is going to have some sort of sequence number involved in it. In be, it what I was using is I was labeling these as one, two, three, four in the past. But the way the numbers actually look is you're going to see a little different range and it's probably going to look a little random at first. Maybe this first one is 1001 and this next one is 2001. Perhaps the next one is even different yet and we're looking at uh, 
2055. Uh, and so you'll, the numbers that you'll see in here may look a little strange for you at first, but we'll talk about the sequencing and how that, ha how that happens. Uh, just as a side note for now, what essentially what's using is the first byte within the data of that segment is whatever, whatever byte number that is, that's what's getting sent across there. So we'll talk about that sequencing and how that sequencing happens. But for now, just know that we have to sequence this as, as we send it over and that it can be found in the header as well. Okay, here we actually see it, the sequence number here, and we see that it actually takes up four bytes or 32 bits. So the sequence number is a total of 32 bits. And similar to an IP address, it's not. It's not an IP address at all, and it looks very different than that. But uh, it is 32 bits long, and we know that 32 bits, or two to the 32nd power, is over four billion numbers. So four billion numbers can exist within here, four billion different combinations. So the sequence number actually can be very large within here. Now, as it's sending this data over, let's say this is 20,022, we already said there's an acknowledgement number that comes back, and that acknowledgement number is gonna be very similar, look very similar to these sequence numbers. In fact, what the acknowledgement number is, is gonna be the next byte that it's expecting. It's gonna, whatever the next byte that it's accepting. So this acknowledgement number, if this is 2022, maybe the next, byte that it's expecting is 3022. Uh, and so that is the acknowledgement number that it's gonna send over. And for that reason, the acknowledgement number has to be a, a similar size field to what the sequence number is. And as we take a look at the TCP header, we do see that this field is in fact 32 bits long as well, same as the sequence number. All right, next up is data offset. Couldn't quite fit it all in there, so we see data off, but it's actually data offset. We see that it's four bits, and so four bits represents up to 16 possibilities, zero to 15. What data offset is, is tells how big, essentially it tells how big the TCP header is and the number of four bytes. So, um, so what we see here is this right here, we have one, two, three, four, five. So what we would see in here, at, at, for our TCP header at least, we would see at least five that would be in there. But it would be more depending on what options we have available when the, with this. So typically what we would see is uh, a five in there, but if we saw more, that just means that there's additional options that we have in there. And, um, and the data offset, the reason why it's called data offset is it's because how shifted is the data from, from the start of this segment? So it's really, it's from the start of the segment, wherever this is right here, to when you'll actually start seeing the data. So that's the data offset. The TCP header can send some additional information or some additional options along with it. So this last field deals with different options that we're setting as we're sending TCP segments back and forth. So the way that this is flagged is on whether we have uh, options or not and how much options we have within there, how much data is within that options field is determined by the data offset. So the data offset by default is gonna be set up to five here, representing five different lines of this that it's gonna be sent over. But if we have a few more lines here, let's say we have three more lines built within the option set, then this would actually be eight then that would be represented in this data offset. So it just represents, the data offset represents how much, how large that TCP header is and that TCP header will vary in length depending on how much options there are. There is something called padding and that is, is let's say we have options within here that are set but it only takes up two and a half lines, then the rest of this would be considered padding. It's just additional bits that are sent across there because it needs to end uh, on, this, on this 
even numbered line that's right here. It's not going to end in between. And that way the data, data offset is going to specify once again how many lines there are, but we do need a full number of lines uh, for this. And so padding is going to fill in the rest of that. Okay, then we have the reserve section here. The reserve section is just for future growth. Uh, and if we wanna add things like more options to it or more flags to it, then we can uh, put that here in the reserve section. For now, it's just zero, zero, zero. It's three bits long, one, two, three. So what you'd see in most of your TCP headers at this point in time should be just zero, zero, zero. This next grouping of bits right here are called flags. Flags, uh, as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those. And they are just a single bit wide for each one of these. And it's either on or off. And so with these, the NS, the CWR, the ECE, each one of those, it's either going to come in as a zero if it's off or one if it's on. So it's a way to turn on and off different components of what we're trying to either transmit to the other side or different components of the TCP header. So there's different things that we turn on and off and that's what a flag is. All right, so with these flags, the ones I'm most concerned are with is the acknowledgement field, the SIN field, and the FIN field. So these are the three fields that I wanna take a little more in depth look into. The rest of these fields do other functionalities. It could do deal with some sort of concealment. It could deal with uh, windowing and um, if there's some sort of congestion on the line. And so if, if there, the urgent field is used, so this uh, URG, lets you know if the urgent field is set or not. So each one of these has a specific purpose to flag during here. But what I'm most concerned with is once again, the acknowledgement field, the sin field, and the fin field. So the acknowledgement field that we see in here is just whether this field is gonna be used or not, if the acknowledgement is gonna be used or not. I've already said that TCP communication uses this field all the time. So most of the time, this acknowledgement field is used. What, when it's not used is the first round of communication. The first time uh, one machine is reaching out to the other machine, there's really nothing to acknowledge. And so since there's nothing to acknowledge, this is gonna be set to zero. But after it establishes that connection pretty quickly, that's the second, second thing that these two, compute, these two devices are sending, it's going to switch that from a zero to a one because we start using the acknowledgement field and we utilize, so we, since we utilize the acknowledgement field, then that switches to a one. Okay, next we have the SYN field or the synchronize field. The synchronize is to synchronize sequences. Right. Essentially what this is, is right at the beginning, there's a little handshake that happens between two devices saying, hey, we're gonna establish a conversation. We're gonna establish a connection. We're gonna communicate. So let's synchronize on our communication here. And so a random number is put into this sequence number as it gets sent over to the other side and it turns the sync or uh, this flag, the sync flag on as it sends it over and lets the other device know, hey, I'm starting a conversation. This is the number I've chosen to start, to start this communication. And that other device is going to send something back. Similarly, it's going to have a sequence number that it sends over to the other side and it's going to have that bit turned on, the sync bit turned on so that it says, hey, this is the sequence number that I'm going to start out with. After that, they don't need to synchronize anymore. So really it's just the first two segments that are sent back and forth, part of this handshake that just says, okay, we're going to communicate back and forth together. So that's the sync field right there. And depending on what the sync field is, if it's a zero or one, it actually changes the meaning of several of the other flags within there. Then we have the fin bit. The fin bit is just a, once again, it's a one or a zero. It's just, it's one bit long. It's a one or a zero and it flags the ending. So the last packet that's sent, the last segment that's sent from the sender sends a finish and says, okay, I'm all done. Essentially, we'll, we consider this the thank you. It's the thank you segment to say, thank you very much. So I'm finishing this conversation with you.
So we've already mentioned that if there's some sort of congestion along the line, there's a mechanism through acknowledgments that allows not too much data to be sent across. What I mean by that is this PC over on this side and this server over on this side have no idea what connectivity is in between here. It could be poor, it could be really great, it could be both poor and great, meaning that there are certain segments that operate really well and certain segments that don't, but of course, the connection between these two devices are as strong as the weakest link. And so they don't know what they're going to encounter. And the acknowledgments sent back and forth help mitigate some of those issues because once again, as, as the flow is going across here, if, if one of the devices is not receiving an acknowledgement, then the other device just says, well, I'm not gonna send something more until I receive an acknowledgement. Um, so then it will delay in sending the next uh, segments out to the other side. So that's a, an a, a element to this acknowledgement. But there's also something called windowing that allows us to adjust some of the size of the data that's being sent across between these two devices, and that's called windowing. So we've got this field window size, and this is a way for for one device to notify the other device, I can only accept so much information, and this is the window size I'm willing to accept. So what it will do is it will send, this is the window size that I'm willing to accept. Please don't send more data than what I can really take right now. And so it could, the other side could limit that in both the uh, number of segments it's sending, but it also could limit how much per data within that segment that it sends. So as it sends it across, it's not going to overwhelm the other side. So once again, window size is what one device can use to flag the other device that this is what I can accept. All right, next field we have is the checksum field. The checksum field is gonna be a error checking capability on the TCP header itself. And it actually is not just the TCP header, it's also the data. And there's actually some components of the layer three packet, the layer three header that's included in that also. So uh, it's mostly it's the socket information. So it's the I destination and source IP address. Uh, but essentially the checksum is going to check a few components. Once again, it's going to check the TCP header. It's going to check the data. And it's also going to check a couple of components, the source and destination address of the, of the packet as well. Okay, the next field is the urgent pointer field right here. The urgent pointer field is just to I relay some information about which data is urgent. And so we can put that into the urgent data field. And so the urgent data field can be used or not used depending on if this urgent flag is turned off or turned on. If it's turned on, then this flag is then recognized as having information of the about how urgent some of the data is. So that is the urgent pointer field um, and the flag that's associated with it. Thanks again for watching my video. If you liked it, could you hit that like button?